Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about switching to NeoVim. So it's no secret that learning NeoVim is a pretty difficult task. There is a lot that you have to learn to be able to use this text editor as your daily driver. That being said, I do think that it is worth it to learn NeoVim if you have the time. And so today I wanted to show you some tips and tricks and maybe a roadmap of how I would learn NeoVim. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, before you just jump into learning NeoVim, I think there needs to be a pretty good reason for you to actually switch. Um, a lot of times what I hear from people that I know or from comment sections is, oh, I heard about NeoVim. I was told by this person that I should be using NeoVim because it's what like real programmers use. And as a result, they want to now switch over. I don't think that's a good enough reason to switch to NeoVim. So if you're in that group, I would really recommend looking into NeoVim a little bit more and seeing if it's something that you'd actually want to you know, go for. For me, I switched over to NeoVim for a couple of reasons, but one of them was that I was getting some pain in my wrist because I was you know, coding for work eight hours a day, and then I would go home and then I would code for fun for four more hours a day. And that would just like completely obliterate my wrist and my finger joints. And so I wanted to stay on the keyboard as much as possible. That led me to switching over to Vim Motions on VS Code and eventually switching over to NeoVim itself. So let's say that you are really, really committed to learning NeoVim and you do have a legitimate reason for doing this. So there are a couple steps that I recommend you take before you jump straight into NeoVim. Uh, the first of which is using Vim Motions in your main text editor. So I just installed VS Codium for this video to show you, um, but this was the text editor that I used before I switched over to NeoVim. VS Code and most other modern text editors have Vim motions to some capacity. If you don't know what I mean by Vim motions, it's essentially the keyboard shortcuts that you get whenever you use NeoVim. Um, you're probably familiar with the H, J, K, and L instead of the arrow keys to move around. That's the most iconic key maps that NeoVim has that are kind of strange to new users. But most implementations of Vim motions have a whole suite or, or perhaps the entire set of Vim motions. And VS Code is a good example of that. So I can just go into the extensions here and I can look up Vim and let's see what shows up. I don't remember which one is the one you should use. I think it's this one here, this VS Code Vim. So I can install this and trust the publisher and all that sort of stuff. And it, this will basically turn uh, VS Code into a NeoVim-like environment. So now with Vim Motions, I can now use VS Code like it is NeoVim. So I can just open up some sort of file here. I think I have a main.c file. And now that I'm in this file, I can use all of my Vim Motion tricks. So I can do cool things like I can do VIB to, to highlight inside of these brackets. Um, I can like, highlight by paragraphs at a time like this. I can go down and up by half pages. All the things that you expect of sort of like a NeoVim Vim Motions emulator exist in VS Code Vim. So I highly recommend this if you use VS Code and any modern decent editor will have a version of Vim Motions. Now a personal anecdote about this, this is actually how I got into NeoVim. Um, the first time I tried learning NeoVim, I did it for the reasons that I listed earlier in the video. Um, I basically wanted to look cool and I wanted to be a real pro. And I saw that you know a bunch of YouTubers were using NeoVim and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm gonna use NeoVim so I can be cool like them. I switched over, I had no reason to switch over. I was incredibly slow. I refused to learn anything and I eventually gave up. What actually stuck with me was when I was basically dared at work to use Vim motions in VS Code for a week. I used them, I loved them, and then I went over to the actual NeoVim. So this does actually work. It is worth it to actually switch over to them in your editor first before going into NeoVim, just to bridge that gap a little bit. Now, one thing that I really want to emphasize when I say learn Vim motions, I do not mean learn all of the Vim motions. So this is a cheat sheet online just called Vim Cheat Sheet that has a bunch of different Vim motions that you could probably use. Um, and this is a very long list. This is a very, very long list. And if you try to learn all this, like try to memorize this and you actively use 100% of this list in your day-to-day -day editing, it would take forever. Um, I don't know all of this stuff. I know probably most of this just from uh, just daily use for hours on end, but you know, I can't regurgitate this list from memory. What's really important when learning Vim motions is learning the essential ones. So for example, H, J, K, and L, getting comfortable with those, getting really comfortable with using W and B a lot, W, B, and E, those are your friends here, getting comfortable with deletions, changes, replacements, things like that. So for example, C, I, W to change in a word, 
or just a capital D to delete to the end of the line, things like that. You don't need to learn all these random weird commands or you don't need to really learn like super fancy find and replace tricks and stuff like that before switching over to NeoVim. You just need to get the core stuff that you need to be able to be productive using Vim motions. Now that being said, I do recommend having a cheat sheet like this open or having like Google open and always looking and looking to see um, one, if you forget a command, like you can look it up, but also looking up ahead of time. So like maybe you, you have some sort of uh, cursor movement or some text manipulation thing that you think should probably exist in core NeoVim motions, um, but you don't know about it. So you just Google like, does this feature exist in NeoVim? And then you add that to your arsenal basically. But yeah, I'd say if you can move around, you can highlight text, you can type pretty fast. If you get back to your regular coding speed in Vim motions, then I think it's time to move on. Finally, one more thing to note about learning Vim motions in your editor is don't switch back. Don't go back and forth because what that'll do is that'll create a relationship with Vim motions where it's like, oh, I have to do a little bit of practice today. Really, if you can, I know that you know you still have to like be productive at work and stuff, but if you can, just go all in on the motion specifically and they will stick. For me, I was able to be productive within a day. I was back up to my full capacity of coding speed in five days. So, you know, your learning speed can be different, but it is definitely doable. Now, after you get really comfortable with Vim motions, the next step is to actually learn your terminal. So if you are a developer in industry and stuff, you probably do know how to use a terminal, but a lot of people do really avoid using the terminal itself. And this is something that you just can't avoid using the OVM. For example, inside of VS Code here, um, if you wanted to run your code, you'd probably press F5 or press the green button or whatever they put it nowadays, I guess in run here, you would press one of these buttons and it would do some magic and then your program would run. Or for example, you wanna open a project, so you go to file, open folder, and it opens a folder, and then you, you click on it, and then you click open, and then you're in the project. These types of things, um, I would recommend switching over to using the terminal for that. So what I'd recommend is instead of using the GUI for you know running your project and CDing things and copying files and creating files, just use your integrated terminal in your text editor. So And so here, instead of using the GUI for opening a project, I can just go into the project here um, like this, and then I can do, I think it's codium.-r, and this will open the project inside of VS Code. So these things you should be doing to get more used to actually interacting with the terminal itself. And in addition to using your terminal, I'd also recommend getting rid of your Explorer if you have one in your editor. So uh, for VS Code, I think I can do view, maybe appearance, and then get rid of the primary sidebar. Um, just because generally inside of NeoVim, it's not super common to use sidebars. Now, you can add sidebars. You can get a full VS Code style sidebar. I just personally don't use them, and I know a lot of people that use NeoVim don't use sidebars. So if you want to go that extra mile, then maybe get used to using your command palette and just searching up files like that instead because that's a little bit closer to a common workflow inside of NeoVim. Okay, and with that, I think you're finally ready to switch over to NeoVim itself. So whenever you do this, I recommend that you set things up without using a distribution of NeoVim. So what do I mean by a distribution? So distributions of NeoVim are essentially sets of plugins and other settings that are pre-configured for you to make your NeoVim experience a little bit more batteries included and a little bit more uh, opinionated, basically. One of the most popular ones is LazyVim, which essentially just turns NeoVim into VS Code. And the reason that I don't really recommend using these is because it really abstracts away core NeoVim a little bit too much. And instead of thinking about, oh, well, how do I do this in NeoVim? You think, oh, how do I do this in LazyVim? All of a sudden, all the documentation you're reading is, how do I install a plugin in LazyVim? Not how do I install a plugin in NeoVim? Things like that. Um, you know, conflict with your learning process. I think the layer between you and NeoVim should be as thin as possible. And so I do recommend building your configuration from scratch. Now, that being said, that does sound intimidating, but it's actually really not bad. And over the years, it's gotten better and better with more things being added into core NeoVim itself. Now, building your configuration from the ground up by yourself with no external resources would be kind of impossible. So I recommend two resources for you to use while building your configuration. Uh, one of them is kickstart.nvim, which is essentially just a little bit of starting code to get you into NeoVim. Um, so it provides just a simple init.lua, your entry point to your code 
your entry point to your configuration with a bunch of code and a bunch more comments explaining everything, telling you, you know, why is your map leader space, um, things like that. It also has some different things like um, like different plugins installed. So we got git signs, we have which key, um, we have telescope for finding files, things like that are all pre-configured for you. What's really nice about this is it's not super abstracted on top of NeoVim. It's really basically exactly how you would do it if you were just building your configuration on your own, which is the best part about this. You can just learn what you need to learn and pick and choose what, which parts of this you want to include and go from there. The next resource that I recommend is this playlist by Typecraft called NeoVim for Noobs. This is what I personally use whenever I built my first configuration, and I found it to be a really, really easy to follow set of videos. It doesn't go super, super overly fast and assume you know everything about everything, but it also doesn't go extremely overly slow. I think it's a really nice middle ground if you need a little bit more handholding whenever you're first setting up NeoVim. And if you follow that configuration or you go with the kickstart.nvim option, um, you will probably end up learning a lot about NeoVim and probably using a lot of NeoVim if you're building your configuration while you're using NeoVim itself. Um, so after that point, I think you should be in a pretty good position. Um, there are next steps like installing some plugins specific to your development needs and also making things pretty because I do think that you need to enjoy the environment that you work in for hours upon hours every day. Um, so for example, I made my own color scheme. I make sure everything looks all nice and exactly how I want things to look. And I have a bunch of the tools that I need like maybe this file explorer here. And I also have tools that I don't really need but they're fun like this game that I made inside of NeoVim. And on that note, when you do have everything set up, um, I do recommend going through some sort of list of plugins like this awesome NeoVim repo, which is linked in the description, by the way, um, and just go to your specific area and see what the NeoVim community has to offer. So for example, inside of web development, I could use something like, I could use something like JSX element, which gives you a ton of text objects and motion specific to JSX. Um, so things like that could be really, really useful to you. So I'd recommend going through a list like this and picking out those plugins and adding them to your config. What I think you'll find is that after you build up your initial config, you know Vim motions, you have used the terminal and you're all set up and you've gone over this massive hurdle, Everything after that is a breeze. Configuring NeoVim is super, super nice because everything is configurable. Adding plugins is often as simple as adding a string to a Lua table. So it just makes everything moving onward a lot simpler to work with. But I do have to say, you won't become a magical super 10x developer by switching to NeoVim. You will be a little bit faster at editing text probably, and you will also have a way more personalized experience. You might enjoy just opening up your text editor and messing around sometimes, but you won't become some crazy amazing coding wizard just by switching to NeoVim. That's where actually building software comes into play and you know making a difference basically. But if you really like tinkering and messing around with your text editor and stuff, then NeoVim really is the place to be. I do recommend switching over to it as I have, and I couldn't be happier now that I actually have an editor that suits my desires as someone that likes to really optimize my setup and have a keyboard driven workflow. So that being said, that about ends today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found something useful in this. Um, if you like content like this, make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you want an actual like tutorial, like here is the specific things you need to do to uh, build your configuration. If you want that type of video, let me know. I can absolutely make a video or video series like that. But hopefully this is a good overview to get you pointed in the right direction, maybe give you a game plan of how you can get into NeoVim yourself. Uh, with that being said, if you did like this video, make sure to like and subscribe um, and also consider supporting me on patreon so i can continue making videos like this thank you very much for watching have a good day see ya